You are now tuned in to Rich Stamp, Poor Stamp. With Tech and Tiger. That's the next one. Uh, you guys see what's going on with the economy. Yeah, you, you, you guys aren't blind to it. You guys aren't blind to it. Layoffs are at, are at an all-time high. Housing market is is is, is taking a beating. And so are loan signing agents. I feel for you guys. I know I take a lot of shots at you guys, but it's only, I only take shots at you loan signing agents is because the gurus had you drinking that Jim Jones Kool-Aid. They had you drinking that Jim Jones Kool-Aid and they had you believing that loan signings was the only way for you to to cake it and they didn't they they showed you all of these beautiful daisies and dandelions and look everybody's frolicking over here everybody's just enjoying life and it's beautiful but they never ever tell you about these downturns that we're seeing in the economy right now And they have not taught you how to pivot. How to switch it up. To keep that cash flow coming in, in your kingdom, in your empire. That's where I come in. That's what, So I'm not necessarily taking shots at loan signing agents. I'm taking shots at your guru. The person that taught you, take me to your leader. Take me to your leader. That's who I want to talk to. I want to know why they are setting you up for failure. Let me ask you a question. For those that are notaries, have you ever, and I'll wait, have you ever heard General notary work, that's what they call it, general notary work. Have you ever heard of general notary work slowing down? Type it in the chat. Have you ever heard of a conversation from any notary that they say general notary work is slowing down? But I can show you multiple videos from multiple different time periods in different years of notary signing agents saying that the loan signing business has slowed down. I can show you videos. Matter of fact, you can find them pretty easily yourself. Just search it on YouTube. And you'll notice in different time periods, the loan signing services has slowed down for, for many, many notaries. But my question to you is, have you ever heard them ever mention that the general notary work division has ever slowed down? You know why? Because there's two many doc do you understand what it what it means to like bunch up valuable documents all together in one pile and just call it general <laughs> just to call like like you just lump up all these documents that aren't real estate related and you call them general. That shit is nuts. But let's let let's let's play with it because the real term for that should be specialty notary work. Okay, that's the correct term. Anytime you hear somebody saying general notary work, they they sipped on some of the Kool Aid, or they're probably giving out the Kool Aid. Yeah, I'm I'm bucking shots. Shots fired. Indeed. I want you to know I'm here for the smoke.
So let's just play along with it and say, all right, yeah, it's general notary work. Okay, so you're going to tell me that what everything that isn't real estate related is qualifies as general notary work. Okay, so let's see what what documents qualifies general notary work: affidavits, power of attorneys, trust packages, um, claims in litigation. Uh, what else? What else? Cremation papers. Ooh, um, business documents, financial documents, personal documents, and DBAs. All of these documents, we're just going to lump them up in one big pile and just call them general. So with that being said, if all, this huge pile of documents that you can literally make money off of, right? And many, 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 many times you can make more money on these so-called general notary documents than loan signing agents are making. That's a fact because my students do it all the time, all day long. For those that want to participate and enroll in my academy, the link is in the description or in the chat. Got my man Tech here. We're going to take a call from Oakland right now. Tech, I got you live on the air, brother. Peace, peace, peace. <laughs> what up, what up? From the West Coast. Are yeah. you uh, live? Yeah, I'm live right now on, uh, on uh, YouTube and on Zoom. So I was asking the people a question, man. Maybe you can help me out with this. Okay. Have you ever heard loan signing business drying up? Yes. Okay. Well, maybe not to the extent of how busy it was at a one point in time, but yeah, I've heard as it as in disappearing, I would say no, that doesn't happen. Right. But you have right. heard that that it it slowed down for loan signing agents and you know assignments just aren't coming through like they used to especially right now right now have you ever heard and i'm going to use this term loosely have you ever heard anyone say to you that general notary work is slowing down mm, never well uh, yeah i never i've never heard no I've heard, it, but it, it's a kind of a conundrum because <laughs> it's like you you would never say that though. I mean, all right. or I would say that in your approach to get something that's like you, first of all, I wouldn't call it that, and then I wouldn't because that's always out there. Like it's not slowing down because I just did, it, <laughs> you know. Exactly. Yeah, I've so never, I've never seen a video on people making videos about so-called general notary work slowing down. Because when you look at it, bro, they say that we're 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 going to turn this into the the uh, Tech and Tiger show right now. The rich, <laughs> this is the you you guys are actually witnessing the inception of rich stamp poor stamp the show right now. Right here. Right here, right now. So they classify anything that isn't real estate related to be general notary work. That's a big ass pile, bro. This is true. So in order for affidavits, power of attorneys, trust, you know, litigation papers, DBAs, liquor licenses, all of these things that qualify <laughs> as general notary work to slow down, that means the whole economy would have to slow down, bro. That means no divorces are happening. N no one's getting served. There's no lawsuits pending. 
No one's getting older where they need to get a power of attorney, medical power of attorney, whatever. This is that Jim Jones Kool-Aid that I'm talking about, bro. That's an excellent point. That's a brilliant observation, in fact. That means no one's getting hired. Right. Right. No I-9s. Exactly. That means no one is transferring money from their 401k to their annuity. Yep. They're not managing their finances correctly. They're not looking for ways to save on their taxes. They're not trying to buy a new house or uh, try to you know loan a family member money to buy a new house. They're not looking for apartments. Or then the children not going to college. I mean, it would. That's a brilliant observation, by the way. Yeah. So you know, the, so what I was trying to tell the people is that I'm not taking shots at loan signing agents. I'm taking shots at their gurus for not preparing them better for a season that's happening right now. I don't know if you, you had a chance to see that video. I just sent you a video on a loan signing agent talking about how, you know, business has slowed down, it, you know, dramatically and almost to the point with like, well, you guys should have known it was slowing down like this because of all of the massive layoffs that's going on. I was like, no, not really. Not if you're not in that mix. <clears throat> If you're not paying it, if you're not, you know, reading on the economy like that, or, you know, you're, you're studying, you know, stocks where you're, you, you can see that Twitter just laid off half his staff and, you know, uh, real estate companies are letting go of agents. And, you know, if you're not paying attention to stuff like that, how would you know it would affect you as a loan signing agent? Like that, that, that that's beyond your call of duty of being a notary or loan signing agent. At that point, you're entering the realm of being a notary entrepreneur where you're looking at the bigger picture. Most notaries, yeah, most notaries, most notary publics come into the game to make some, some easy bread. Quick. They're not watching Bloomberg TV. To, no, they're not. They're not watching TD Ameritrade TV, the, the quick take. They're not doing that because that is not in their interest. They're like, look, I just want to come into this industry, make some quick quick bread, buy myself some extra trinkets, go on a couple of vacations, and then I, you know, I'm on my own business. I get it. That's a, yeah. <laughs> But when, yeah. but when your guru, your so-called guru, Jim and Jane Jones, decides to give you this Kool-Aid and they tell you that the only thing you should be looking at is loan signing, a, you know, loan signing services, knowing that this isn't the first time the economy has gotten punched in the face where loan signing agents had to go back to their day job. Or, or, you know what I'm saying? Like this happened in 2008. This happened in 2020 with COVID. And it's happening right now in 2022. I've been keeping track of all of this, you guys. Here's the thing. Hmm. Real estate industry, like you just stated, is a cyclical industry. Mm -hmm. The real estate mortgage, when it's good, it's good. Yeah. Oh man, is it great to be in real estate when it's good? Oh man, it's great. Yeah. Cleaning up. People are borrowing money, purchasing overvalued property, buying, selling, buying, selling, refinance. Is when it's good, it's good. And when it's bad, it's not so it's not very fun. Indeed. It's a great business to be in when it's good. But when it's not so good, it's not, it's not, it's, you know, you could be losing your house and trying to sell somebody a house for real estate agents. Some real estate agents don't even own property themselves. Very true. But they got a license. And 
as a result, a long signing agent has a new signing to fulfill. But that goes in cycles. So their guru <laughs> who said you can do incredibly well, which is not necessarily wrong. It ain't, it's not, I wouldn't say it's a lie. I would say it's definitely misleading. It's, a, it's not the full story. They left out the, uh, the ending <laughs> yeah. of the book where the market corrects and then and then people who had no nothing to do with real estate tech companies um you know marketing companies um retail companies you know manufacturing they all experienced this shift all at once and each industry has an effect on each another industry but because we are so closely associated with the real estate industry and because someone told me or showed me that I could do well, then now all of a sudden I'm not doing well, then that person has someone, you have to answer to them then. You know, everybody takes their own responsibility at the end of the day, and you can't, I can't be responsible for somebody else's hustle or their unwillingness to take heed to information, but I know that if someone told me to be a real estate agent and then I all of a sudden the market failed, I would look at that person sideways. I would. I would have to because I, number one, I trusted this person or I looked at to this person for sound advice, for a sound um, direction. I agree. Nike's been around for a long time. Sam's Club been around for a long time. Toyota has been around for a long time. The word is sustainability. Can you see what's coming? Even if you're wrong, even if you're right, but can you see what's coming? Can you withstand? Can you be, there's companies that Circuit City ain't around and no more. Nope. Sears, they ain't around no more. Technology changes. Things get introduced. You have to be towards the future and almost anticipate or be ready to absorb those changes. You know, so uh, a wise lady, she said, um, new goals require new habits. A lot of the things that we were taught back in the days from either our parents or, you know, people that, you know, started in, in certain industries early on, it's not relevant today. This, this is probably the, the fastest growing time that we have ever seen in the history of men. Everything that was on the Jetsons is like almost like coming true besides the flying car. But they got a couple of prototypes of that already. I, I just saw one in Saudi Arabia. But we have electrical cars. They just uh, revealed a 100% solar powered vehicle right now. Meaning you don't need to charge it like a tesla it can run for months <laughs> oh, so wow. so we're, we're entering an era where people shop differently this last weekend thanksgiving black friday cyber money is the highest it has ever been in history Black Friday generated $9.1 billion. Goodness. One day. One day, you guys. You listen to one day it generated $9.1 billion. The day before Thanksgiving, it generated $5.4 billion. We're talking about double digit billions in two days. And the 9.1, 85% of that was done online. There you go. 
Wait, wait, wait. Let let that one sink in. If you're over the yeah. age of 18, you know that there was a time people did not even want to put their credit cards online to per make a purchase. Now they have people, random people dropping off food to them with DoorDash and Uber Eats. They're jumping in random looking cars with just an LED light that says Uber and your driver will be coming up. This is how fast the economy is changing. Your Netflix account, your Amazon, they probably have five different credit cards they're storing into their database. You just have to select which credit card you want to use. Yeah, it's rapidly changing. Like the industrial era, the industrial period, like that of our uh, grand uh, grandparents, mm -hmm. where you know, on average, they probably worked twenty years at a place. Like just to put this into context, like you're saying, are you following kind of like trends about current events and and uh, other markets and things like that? You know. The average for for someone under four years old, um, a millennial, so to speak, I fit into that that um that category. You know, people go to college, they go to school, and they come out and you know got a lot of debt, and then they end up working, and then they change jobs every few years, three five years, as long as they stay at a job. That was unheard of mm -hmm. not that long ago, within our grandparents' lifetime. You know. That was unheard of. People stayed in one position. And the reason why that's important is because, you know, the that's how rapidly things are changing. Automation and globalization will be, you know, what it, it will be an, an, an equalizer, so to speak. Like you can get things cheaper. <laughs> you can find deals. You can go online. You have options now. Yep. Whatever happens on another side of the country or even inside of the world, can get to you in moments, and in seconds. Indeed. So you mean to tell me that the way you get information hasn't been updated, the way you live your life hasn't been updated? It's just completely different. The industrial era, that we're in the informative era, the information era. So you have to inform yourself about what's out there. You have to inform yourself. Or someone else will, <laughs> right? Or as I'm leaving the UPS store right now, you know? Mm -hmm. They don't do I-9 verifications here, by the way. The lady who I just left, she tried to get her I-9 verification here. They said they can't touch it. Oh, yeah. That, the, the most they'll do is a, a, is an affidavit. They, like, they, they, they will two-step an affidavit at the UPS store all day. But anything, yeah. anything more complicated than an affidavit, just a verification of a person's ID and stuff, or who they are, the, it, man, you'll confuse, you'll confuse that UPS worker. It'll be like asking for filet mignon at the McDonald's aisle. They'd be like, uh, what, what, what do we do here? You know, not to give them too much, too many instructions. I went to the UPS store to get a, a document notarized. The chick said, uh, I don't like doing a lot of reading. I, look, I just stamp it and I just like, I go, I, I don't want to read a lot of stuff. <laughs> you say, really? <laughs> well, I got some more of these for you. Yep. I, I, I got all my affidavits uh, notarized by her. And she charged me a dollar. Put that on a credit card. Yeah, I had like five, I had five affidavits. She knocked out all five of them. Because she didn't want, she didn't want to bother reading. She was like, "Look, I'm just a notary here. Whatever, dude. Just bring the paper. Bam, 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 bam." And she was like, "All right, here. Yeah, a dollar." Well, how about this? I bet you they didn't tell you anything about the document either. Right? That's a good thing. You oh, definitely. There, they tell you, or you say, "I need to get this." Or you know, I'm not verification sign. Or um, I've actually got an account in the UK, and I've got a uh, the 
Oh no! If you say if you say stuff like that, that I mean, well, I could say for here in Chicago, you say that they're they're immediately gonna show you the door. They they immediately ask you, you ask for a notary, they say, what kind of document do you have? Anything beyond an affidavit, they're showing you the door. We don't do those. I saw them reject like seven people while I was online. Yeah, people call me and they tell me that they tried to get this power of attorney to sign at the yes door and them and their three siblings, they were couldn't do it. Yes. They couldn't know it. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, you walked in there with you and your whole family. Yeah, they didn't tell you anything about that. They, all you heard or all you saw on the on the the glass, you know, you drive by the store, you see the big sign, it says notary. So you go in there, you get a, you're like, hey, I'm looking for a notary. I heard they had notaries here, and they say, yeah, but not like that though. <laughs> they, yeah, we don't do that. Oh, what what do you mean? Where do I go? What, how do I get this sign? Well, I'm sorry, it's against our policy to sign anything having to do with investments. Uh, overseas or opening up a bank account in India. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Or actually, you know, trying to send my kids to go see their grandfather in the, out of the country. What? What do you mean? Can you draft up a document for me? No, we can't do that. Sorry. Yeah. I was hoping you can help me with, you know, selling, getting this title. Um, I sold a car in Iowa. And my boss, or I sold the car to my boss, and now he needs to get the title, and it's been delayed for five months because I tried to do it myself, and then the state rejected it. So here I am, five months later, and the, the person I sold the car to is, is upset because they paid me, and I don't have any money to hire an attorney. Yeah, the UPS store didn't tell you any of that. They just said notary, and you showed up because you can get something for $15. Or ten dollars, or two dollars, or whatever it is. So, tech, because you you train a lot of notaries, you set them up for success. What is the biggest problem that you see new notaries have? And then I'll ask you the biggest problem you see with notaries that have been in the game for a while. So, let's start with beginner notaries. What what is the biggest problem that you have noticed? that new notaries have coming into this industry? Talk too much. Elaborate. I'm uncomfortable with small talk and chit chat. And although people have called me a people's person and I have the gift of gab, but I need to know everything about this liquor license application. I need to know that there are seven signatures and I need to see every single piece of paper in order for me to get this done. So I get into the signing room or I'm at the person's house or wherever, Starbucks, mm -hmm. and then I start asking them questions. I start looking and examining over their documents and I can see their bank account numbers and I can see how much money they have in this investment account. And then I can see what, how many quick claim deeds and what's the, the property of the address. So they're scanning over the documents and people don't like that. So they uncomfortably talk. Mm. Unnecessarily too. How's your holidays going, right? It's it's one thing. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Like, hey, how about this document? That's what I came here for, right? Yeah. Is, this, is everything okay? Because you sound nervous, <laughs> right? Here's a here's some. Don't say anything. How about that? I mean, it, try it. <laughs> try it. <laughs> don't it say a word. Shot. See how fast it goes. See how happy they are, right? So I would say just talking, just talking too much. And that can be a nervousness. It can be a sign from training, you know, from people saying that you have to know, you have to point to the person, you have to point out where they're going to sign so they don't make a mistake. See, listen, if somebody asks you a question, go ahead and answer it. Don't say nothing like a butte, right? You don't just sit there, right? Don't say nothing. Respond like a human. Don't be like a robot. But what I'm saying is you start explaining things or making suggestions or recommendations or you know what i had another client who tried to do three quick claim deeds and they didn't put they said it was okay to put their middle initial and they didn't have to you know be consistent with what's on the other uh quick claim deeds so they now you're in a different now you're wearing a different hat you're playing a 
different role when you start opening your mouth in that sense. Mm. So talking too much, I would say from new notaries. Now you did something interesting today. Uh, you you had a brain box uh, mastermind where you were you were uh, you had your students in the hot seat. Tell 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 the audience a little bit about uh, the brain box and what what you have going on there. So the brain box is is a, is the ultimate masterclass. Mm -hmm. There's one subject and we go in. We go in and we examine it from very many angles. Today happened to be, um, I was, I presented a, and this is a presentation style, there is collaboration and engagement, things like that. But it's basically a one, we focus on one thing. We don't make it complicated. We try to get it as simple as possible. So today there was one video, a minute and 17 seconds. Only the, that's it. And it was basically a phone call. I was on the soccer field. Person called me up. The first question out of their mouth <laughs> is, what time you close? Mm -hmm. And that person, from that question, you may think that that person may just be kicking tires and may, you know, may price checking, but that person is is a client. And, and we, pr we proceed to see an example of how to take somebody, how to understand why somebody will call you and ask that question and how to turn that person into a client. And it's all based upon the principle that when people call you, they, they're looking for a notary, so you gotta give it to them. And the hot seat portion comes in because, you know, it's, it's interesting just as a follow-up to some of the question, which is uh, the difference between new notaries and the experienced notaries. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people come into this industry from all different backgrounds and they have their own talents. You guys are all so special in your own way. Indeed. You have experience in different industries and uh, other jobs. And that's not wasted. That There is some, there's immense value there. You just haven't applied it to yourself, to your own job or your own business. You've applied it to someone else. So even though those notaries were relatively new, and by relatively new, I mean less than two years. Right, you need two years just to even learn. But these notaries are less than two years, but they've had experience in other uh, medical professions and and uh, shipping and uh, logistics and things like that. So them bringing their, you can this can be brought out of you. this this inner power can be brought out of you with the right you know guidance in the right direction. And so that's what we worked on. That's where the hostage comes in. Take what you already know. Take what you're already great at, what you've already excelled at. If for some reason you don't work in the industry for some reason, maybe it's personal. <laughs> you know, maybe you didn't. Maybe you punched your boss. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? But for some reason you don't work in the industry anymore or for that job, but you took something away. Apply that to this business of yours. Mm -hmm. So talking on the phone is a perfect example of that. So I put people on the hot seat. We grill them. And at the end, you realize that the scenarios is really what you're um, intimidated by. Yes. So it's kind of, so older and more experienced notaries, not so much, they don't talk too much or talk enough. It's the confidence. To me, I find that it's the confidence where they get intimidated or they're not, they, we could probably get, some, get them to a point where they don't feel intimidated, but that is. Um, but confidence is, is really the big thing at that point. I feel I should get fifty dollars just for one signature, or a hundred dollars for doing you know whatever it is because I earned it. Well, that's a job mentality because here I come and I can provide the same service faster. I can do it more efficiently, and I charge higher. So why am I getting the business over you? Great point. That's the open market. And that should excite you because now you're free to use your creativity. That's so, so true, man. Yeah. That, that's something as simple as a notary. In some states, it's only two dollars. Tiger, come on, bro. Shit, you, it's, you, it, you can't sell a two dollar item. Illinois is one dollar. It's one dollar in Illinois. You mean to tell me you can't sell a one dollar item? Come on. 
You can. The cheaper it is doesn't necessarily mean the better. And, and here's the thing, like just just because I, I come from a sales and marketing background, people don't realize that there are a lot of people that are fearful of buying cheap stuff because they equate something cheap to being not of value. Case in point, proven point, luxury bags is, is, is one of the most, uh, you, you can see it all the time with Louis Vuitton and Gucci bags. You can, you could see it with, um, luxury watches, Rolex, Cartier and stuff. You could see it with, um, um, hotels, Ritz Carlton, you know, uh, versus motel eight, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, like. People equate a higher price to being better quality. Mm. So when you tell a person, um, yeah, we'll come out to your house. We'll send them. We'll come out to your house, notarize your documents um, at seven o'clock at night. And we'll do all of this for $20. There are many people out there that think that you're going to rob them. You're going to steal something out of their house. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't even know if I want this person to come in my house because they might take something. It seems <laughs> awfully cheap. I, I'll meet you at the garage. How about I meet you at the local Wendy's? It's just, it's, I don't even want you to know where I live. I've had many, many clients tell me if you was less than, if you told me you would do this assignment for less than $150, I wouldn't have went with you. Mm. I've had multiple clients tell me this. As of all, yeah. Powerful. It's powerful. Wow. Because I wouldn't feel comfortable letting you into my house. I wouldn't feel comfortable letting you know where I live. Because there's no way a service this valuable, this convenient, should be so cheap. And it, it, it and, and in, in some, and many customers' mind, they look at you that you may be inexperienced as well. Yeah. So, because you have to look at it this way, it's like they call three notaries, right? Two of them say 150, another one says $178, but then they call the third company, which is you, and then you tell them 40 bucks. Mm. How are you so far away from the contrast pricing? Why are you? I like, like, no, no I, I want you guys to think about this. Think about this for a second. You get three estimates to put some windows in your home. One company was 5,000. The other company was, was, was 3,500. And the last company was $300. Wouldn't that raise a suspicion to for you? I mean, just think of it as a consumer. Wouldn't that kind of like heighten your suspicion? Like, are they even licensed and bonded? How does this person 3,000, this person's 4,000, 5,000, but this one's $300. Like the, you're probably, <laughs> you're going to X that person off of your list. Easy. That's easy. And and I know what someone may be listening, just to, just in case somebody who's listening to this, because shout out to you for even bringing, you know, that into that whole price structure and, 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 and positioning yourself like that. I had never heard anyone really elaborate and articulate that in the way that you have. So, but it works in the opposite as well. So a notary might be listening to this. So some business owner may be new, maybe experienced, and they say, well, the person across town 
my cross out competition does it for five dollars cheaper or ten dollars cheaper so everybody's going to go to them and if it's just five dollars then why does that matter well that same principle applies yes go the opposite direction go up now you're in the category of your own a few years ago i did a i, I did a uh I did a YouTube live talking about high end call girls. I saw a special on 2020. Uh, Barbara Walters wasn't there. It was like somebody else. Right. And uh, they were interviewing call girls that that were making anywhere from twenty thousand dollars per visit and up wow right so i said i so now i'm looking at i'm 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 I'm, you know just my marketing mind is just going in now right and i'm like this is fascinating right so i'm looking at it and it's like okay what makes them different than the 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 street walker that's charging you know 50 bucks 100 dollars or whatever and the way they positioned they now mind you they're both call girls yeah but the way the twenty thousand dollar person positioned herself she positioned herself as the second wife the the wife that you've always wanted but you don't have to leave your your current wife because you know the lawsuit will get crazy, the divorce, you'll pay alimony, child the spousal support. Or she was a confidant. That was one. So she the the CEO, and it, this was crazy because they had um they were interviewing these call girls in England. And the way they positioned themselves, one, they positioned themselves as a confidant, right? Tell me right. what and as notaries, you guys could learn from this because I learned from it. Okay, tell me what's going on with your documents. Well, that call girl was like, well, tell me what's going on with the company right now. Well, we're in a merger right now. They're trying to do hostile takeover. This is what the CEO is telling the call girl. This is no different from you telling, asking the the client, tell me what's going on. Tell me a little bit about your situation. What's going on with that you need this power of attorney? And have the customer reveal to you what is going on. Wow. Well, my mom's not doing well. She's bedridden. Um, the money is tied up in a bank. We need to do a financial power of attorney. They will not release any of the funds and let us access any of the funds. And the bills are piling up. Uh, we're getting past due bills. And then they're starting to send foreclosure letters. Damn. He could be happy to see you. Exactly. You see what I mean? You just did something different than most notaries will not do. And it's a secret weapon. I repeat, it's a secret weapon. Once you know how to to spot the invisible profits, we talk about this tech. Yeah. There are invisible profits that which they call them opportunities. I call them invisible profits. But if you cannot spot an opportunity in a conversation that you're having with a person on a one-on-one basis, how could you do it in a group setting? Yeah. This lady just told you that they're in dire need. They need to free up some funds. They need to get a power of attorney. They're bedridden. Those are gems. What's the what's the most you ever made on a notarization tech? Eighteen hundred. You understand what the the type of confidence you have to have to ask a person to pay eighteen hundred for a notarization? It was nervous. Though. I was nerve wracking. But you did I it. Didn't even, yeah, I did it. I would. I'll never forget it either. <laughs> you know. I'll never forget it. Second question, what what is the biggest problem you see with notaries that have been in the game for a while? 
Mm-hmm. You know what? I'm going and I'm gonna keep it like this. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make this very simple, very very simple. Man or woman, black or white, East Coast, West Coast, whatever. They get too far. There's a lot of notaries, Tiger. They won't admit this, but there's a lot of notaries who think they know. They 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 think they know too much. Like, Ooh. like a, a know it all. I I know. Oh, I don't. I've been doing this for 22 years. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. Or I've been doing this for 15 years. I've been doing this for five years. And if the document says it's in Illinois, but the signer's in Florida, then you're going to have to cross it out. And then you're going to have to, no, no, no. You have to go down take that to the recorder's office. And then you have to, you, you can't put your, your name written. They know everything about everything, about everything, except <laughs> how to get the client. Mm. They can tell you everything about everything. They know too much. Wow. I had a notary literally lecture me. Lecture me about when you sign a trust and there's 12 signatures or there's 50 signatures. I did a trust once and there was five trusts. There, 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 there's, there's, a, there's some trust there that I've never even seen before. Mm-hmm. It was on paper that I've never felt before. <laughs> they had medallions on it. Huh. Right? It required two notaries. Wow. I happen to be one of them. And here I am, quick, efficient. Mind you, I've already been paid, okay? I've already collected my funds. I'm here just to execute exactly what I've already been paid for, but here's a notary here. And again, you know, I'm not going to say what the person was or, you know, what their gender or what their uh, background is or anything, but here we are. And I, and I recognize this immediately. This is a person who know, doesn't know it all. This person is confusing the signer. And when they question, you know, they look at me and I'm, listen, there's 50 signatures on this thing. I'm going to give me your document titles, give me your names. This dude's done prints. That's how it is. But I'm not giving 50 entries into my journal. Oh, no, no, no. You have to do this. This is going to be according to law. You have to write down 50 times if they sign. Listen. Okay. (laughs) So... Not only do people want you to get out of their house as quickly as possible, but they don't want you to come in there and then confuse them. A notary might think they they know it all. They know everything about everything. Can you verify somebody's identity identification and then can you verify someone's identification and can you witness them sign the document? Got it. All right. That's it. We didn't call you for counseling. <laughs> we didn't call you for advice. Hmm. Hopefully we do this once, but this notary knows everything about you, everything about what you should be doing. That's the biggest thing I would say. Don't, it's, it, it, would be, it would be dangerous to you know, think that you know it all. Dude, I learn from you every day. Yeah, vice versa. For sure. Yeah, it, 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 because you, if you take the approach of the know-it-all, then you start to close yourself off to new information that's coming in. And there's, <laughs> there's so much new information out here, man. Like, there's so many better ways of trimming the fat, uh, streamlining your business, automating your business, learning from, uh, you know, people that got skin in the game, and just all of that stuff, man. Uh, so tech, we're, we're wrapping up right now. Um, tell people how they can get in touch with you and, uh, what you have going on right now, man, any promotions, any offers? Yeah. So I have a very special offer for people who are looking to build up their confidence and looking to stop. They're looking to keep the phones consistently ringing. It's one thing to have your phones ring 50 times a day, but it's another thing to 
to confidently walk clients through uh, their documents and help them to get their appointments taken care of. So I have a, a book more appointments challenge. The only ob objective is to book more appointments. Nice. So book more appointments challenge. That's BMAC. So go to Golden State. I'm sorry. Go go to mygoldenstampnotary.com slash BMAC. BMAC. Book more appointments challenge. And, and what you'll find is that if you have the ability to to accept a phone call, then a client or a customer who's looking to get one specific thing done, they're looking to get, it's not confusing, it's just one thing. You can help this person and you can find yourself with many more clients. I love it. Um, my my only offer to you guys tonight is, hey, we got the million dollar notary call script course. Uh, the price will be changing soon. I don't want to date this too much, but we do have a very, very nice discount going on right now. So you guys should definitely take advantage of that discount. Um, you can go to the million dollar notary dot com. Go to the million dollar notary dot com and take advantage of this discount. It's helped thousands of notaries um, all across the United States this, and actually internationally. Uh, so I had created this call script. It just it it does the damn thing, man. <laughs> it just does the damn thing. It really, really works. Um, real results, real people. You know, I was the spook that sat by the door and I learned from the best in sales and marketing, at, at least that I was privileged to be in the proximity of, you know, I'm not saying that they were the best ever, but they were the best that was in my proximity. And I took everything that they learned and I, I poured into the notary industry. So. If you guys want to take advantage of that, of that, and take the notary call script course, just go to the million dollar notary dot com. Any final words, Tech? No, that's it, man. My final word for you is for anybody who's listening right now. You know, it's going to take. You know, did you want to get your message out? Like, it's going to take a little bit of. Um, uh, thinking differently, just just a little bit different. It's good for you though. It's really yes. is. And when you when you approach it with a slightly different lens, and you let yourself expand, allow your you know allow information, new information to come to your mind, and um, you'd be surprised what happens. <laughs> you'd be surprised. So yeah, give those things a chance. You know, doctors they continually get educated. You know, they have to continuously keep their skills sharp and be up on the latest advances. Because the, the things change, you know, the lawyers, they have to constantly be recertified and they have to, you know, make sure that they know the law and, you know, insurance agents and police officers, you have to cost teachers. You have, this isn't, this idea of reinvestment into yourself is nothing new. Continue education is nothing new. You know, it, be, to be a part of the future, you got to be a part of the future. You can't be doing stuff that's the 50 years old you can't be having a flip phone when everybody else has iphones out here <laughs> <laughs> facts yeah. yo and then with with that being said we will catch you guys on the rebound you heard <laughs> <laughs>